Hey Lemons fans, it's Nick and Judge Phil and we have just returned from the High Plains Drifter race at HPR in Colorado. It was a full 24 hour race. And in fact, it was one of two simultaneous 24 hour lemons races running on the same weekend. I can't think of another sanctioned buddy that's ever done that. The other 24 hour race was at CMP in South Carolina. And uh, I heard that a Taurus SHO won overall at CMP. Yeah, we had a Taurus SHO in our race too. Can't remember how it did though. One thing that's hella sweet about racing in Colorado is that Colorado's in the middle of the country, and we had teams from all over the country, including the Diffsticks and their new Beetle from Houston, as well as the As Seen on TV racing that brought their Kia Rio, or maybe it was a Reno, all the way from California. That was hella sweet. Also hella sweet were Brett and Amanda Holdaway. They're Colorado locals. They helped us with judging. They helped us with HQ and registration. Brett brought his enclosed car trailer for us to use as an HQ building out there at the gate. All of that was awesome, except for the hella hot ass halogen shop light that we were using that occasionally the giant Colorado moths would fly into. Well, Nick, you should know, those are Miller moths. That's what we call them here in Colorado, Miller moths. One thing that was extra hella sweet about this race was that uh, Tom Webb of the Tommy Salami team, uh, recognizing that we didn't want to be exposed to virus, made us a robot judge. And this judge enables me to sit back and uh, not interact directly with racers. It has two modes. One is ordinary judge mode. I couldn't get an Arctica right now. You don't even know. You know nothing. Bad rubber, bad, bad. And one is Nixon mode. Now, as most of you guys know, Lemons got its start way back in 2006 at Altamont Speedway. And amazingly, to this day, cars that raced at Altamont still show up every now and again. The one ball Honda CRX is in fact an old Altamont veteran, and it was here at this race at HPR. Hella sweet. One thing that was really but terrible was once again Planeteer Racing showed up for about their 10th year racing at HPR with their Prelude. And once again, they broke something having to do with front hubs, front suspension, front axle, wheel bearings, whatever it is. They always break the same parts of the car and they spend almost every weekend wrenching on that car right in front of the penalty box where they always pit, but terrible. Now for these lemons races, we rent a lot of different kinds of cars and some are good and some are not so good. Unequivocally, the worst, the rock bottom of them all is what I got at HPR and it is the Dodge Journey. That's whack. Hell sweet. We had this Chevy Love that made its debut at the Kansas race last year and it showed up this time with a bunch of really bitchin' bodywork. I mean, we're talking 80s Hayward mini truck style here. And uh, they had a wheel fall off when they had a ball joint fail. They managed to find Chevy Love suspension parts in the middle of nowhere in Eastern Colorado on a Friday night and they fixed it and they got back on the track. Hella sweet. Also hella sweet, the Petrosexuals, we'll talk about them a little bit later in this wrap up. They brought an amazing pit vehicle, this motorized couch. It's a bench seat out of some junkyard vehicle. It's got electric motors and a joystick, hella sweet. So another hella sweet thing is you don't normally apply this to BMWs, but uh, this team found themselves a 1982 733i, a big luxurious seven series with the manual transmission. This car cost damn near a hundred grand if you adjust for inflation. And it ran okay until it broke because of really over complex fuel system problems. But so what? Class C, manual transmission, BMW, hella sweet. 
So this is Colorado, home of all-wheel drive cars. Subaru's obviously super popular. Audi's also popular. We had two at this race, both from the 90s. Instead of being equipped with the very problematic in lemons 1.8 turbo motor, these had the V6. They ran all weekend, mostly, I think. One of the but terrible things about 24-hour races is that they happen at night. And it's HBR, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's the most remote track we go to and it's really, really, really dark there. You can see nothing. People get all fatigued and it's basically but terrible. Why do you people do this? For the first time ever at a 24 hour straight lemons race, we had a 12 hour race within a race. The idea being, hey, if you wanna do the full 24 hours, you can. If you only wanna do half, hey, you can do that too. It's only a distinction in the timing and scoring. It'll be easy. <laughs> You sure? Turns out there are all these crazy moving parts and we're probably never gonna do that ever again. So one of the things we didn't really think out too straight when we were doing this 12 hour race within a race thing was how we're gonna do the award ceremony. So when midnight came along, after about an hour or so I realized, oh, we need to have award ceremonies. So uh, class A and class C, couldn't find a class A team. Found class C, walked over and set the trophy on their hood in a very solemn award ceremony with nobody but me to witness. So speaking of the 12 hour race within a race, the X car and driver team, they've raced in lemons forever. They've been desperate to win overall. They've come close a couple of times. They've also totally stepped down their own wieners a whole bunch of times. They have finally figured out the foolproof solution for winning a lemons race. This is how you do it build a $40,000 cheaty ass BMW, show up, get 100 penalty laps, race in class A in the 12 hour race totally unopposed and win despite mm, turning a total of a net like 12 laps. They figured out the system. That's the only way they could figure out how to win a lemons race. They finally done it. We're probably never doing the 12 hour ever again. So hey, good for them for figuring it out. System beaten. One more thing that's always hella sweet is when instead of bringing a BMW or an Integra, you bring a Dodge Shadow. And so this team brought an automatic four-cylinder Dodge Shadow with a really cool Blues Clues theme. And a kid came with the car who really appreciated that theme. These guys ran away with Class C in the 12-hour race. Well done. So not nearly as sweet as an automatic four-cylinder Dodge Shadow is a V8 manual Ford Mustang. This team was also running in this 12-hour race within a race. It was one of two entries in Class B. The other entry was one of Salty Thunder's Pontiac Fieros. V8 Ford Mustang should have a pretty good chance against a Pontiac Fiero in a 12-hour race. However, this Mustang never ran. These guys were messing with it. It would start up, sound terrible. They would tinker with it for hours and hours again, start it up, and it would sound exactly the same as it did before. It was butt terrible. Mm. Colorado is home of the Air Force, very Air Force heavy state, and uh, the deadline for the split off of the Space Force from the Air Force as a separate service in the military took place on Friday while we were at the track, and you could take your oath to join the Space Force from the Air Force at any time up to that deadline. So we had a lieutenant colonel and a captain in the Air Force take their solemn oaths to become members of the Space Force standing on the retaining wall right by the hot pit, and afterwards they toasted it with space beer made from yeast that went into space. Hella sweet. The life of the Paddock Party Award, well, it just ain't what it used to be pre-COVID because we don't really have paddock parties. However, Salty Thunder Racing, their members were the people that put together the robot judge. That was the most festive thing that happened all weekend, so they got the Paddock Party trophy. For the judge's choice, we have this team that's uh, the engineering department students of the University of Colorado in Boulder, and they're actually sponsored by the engineering department somehow. That's a bit of social engineering that I, I wish I had seen. Uh, this is a cast of thousands. They have two cars, and uh, even though they started out with a terrible Cavalier, they switched entirely to Miatas. They actually held tryouts at uh, Pikes Peak Raceway for their next round of students to race. They break a lot. They get a lot of black flags. 
they mean well, but it's always a handful for the judges. This time, not that many black flags, ran pretty clean, they broke cars, they kind of fixed cars, and we just really have come to like these kids, and we just gave them the judges' choice because they've really earned it this time. So once again, this was a double 24-hour race weekend. 24-hour race at HPR in Colorado, 24-hour race simultaneously happening at CMP in South Carolina. Two of our veteran Lemons racers, Derek Steinkamp and Christian Mental Ward, they decided we've got to do both races in the same weekend. This opportunity will never present itself again. So that's what they did. Derek started in CMP, did some laps there, flew to Denver, did some laps there. Driver first class, Steinkamp, warning for duty, sir! Mental Ward inexplicably started in Colorado, helped us with registration, then flew to CMP, did laps at CMP, then flew back to Denver and did laps. This required all kinds of crazy travel logistics. Hello, good sir. I am the national traveling man of some regard, and I would very much like to participate in your motoring contest. I have already done one today, and I would like to be at this one. Derek had some issue where he was banned permanently from renting a car, so he had to take Uber from the airport to the various racetracks. They both wore their driver's gear in the airports to do their travel. This whole thing was incredible. We figured we needed to have an award that honored the champion of this one-on-one -on -one battle. And so we did. We called it the Idiot of Effluency. It was a complicated calculation, but we think we've arrived at a verdict. Let's say that you're some young guys who want to race, and you find a race shop where they have an old mid-90s Super Impreza rally car. Nothing special, but it's got most of a cage in it, sitting behind the race shop. They bought it, they prepped it, they brought it to the inspections at our race, and we told them, oh man, this thing's going to toss a rod in the first hour. You guys are going to be lucky to get 10 laps. And as it turned out, it ran much of the weekend. It was okay. The, the uh, crap in the fuel system eventually kind of made it stop running. But we figured this is such a Coloradan experience that we decided to call this the Welcome to Colorado Starter Kit Award. Heroic Fix was awarded to Caddy Daddy Racing in their 1981 VW Rabbit pickup, which is of course called a Caddy in other markets. And I didn't really get the connection between a golf that carries stuff is called a Caddy. Crazy. Mind blown. They showed up, this car had a turbo engine swap, which probably had 66 horsepower instead of the factory 32. Whatever it was, it smoked like crazy. Eventually the smoke got so bad that it was a visibility hazard for everybody. They got 30 black flags to fix the smoking. They finally took it off the track. They wrenched and wrenched and wrenched, tried to solve the problem. They removed the turbocharger. It was back to 32 horsepower. This whole process took forever. We figured they were gonna give up. They never did. They went back out on track. Car was half as fast as it was before. Didn't seem to bother them. They kept going incredibly heroic. A lot of ways to win the I Got Screwed Award in Lemons Racing. And we think of this award as the flip side of the heroic fix. In this case, it happened when the uh, Petrosexual Racing Caddyata, which is the fastest car in Lemons history at HPR, with its Cadillac HT4100 V8 in a Miata, uh, things were going great, knocking out nice, reliable, quick laps when a rookie team driving a Nissan Maxima driver overcooked the corner, started to spin, didn't put both feet in, unpredictable spin out, collected the Caddyata. Caddyata looked like an accordion from the front towers forward. Meanwhile, the Maxima looked like a cozy coupe had bumped into it at three miles an hour. They completely got screwed. Sorry, petrosexuals. Organizer's choice went to USMC Racing. This is, of course, Brian Check and his gang of US Marines. This is a really cool thing. He's built these Lemons cars, and he lets Marines, and in fact, any servicemen and women, to drive these cars in a Lemons race just as a cool activity to do among fellow veterans and active service people. It's awesome. So this race, they brought three cars, two P71 Crown Vicks, and one super cheaty old school Camaro. They got a lot of black flags. They had a great attitude. 
they let Derek Steinkamp race when he showed up from CMP. Well-deserved org choice. For the index of effluency, the top prize of lemons racing, this one, we had some pretty good cars, but it's really hard to top a Geo Metro at the stock engine when run by a two-man team, a father and son duo, for 24 straight hours. Uh, they actually had an axle failure where it pulled out of the hub and they welded the axle to the hub, went back out, got some more laps out of it, and eventually failed, but by that point, they had already nailed down the IOE. Very, very well-deserved IOE for ran out of talent racing in their Metro. Well done, guys. And that's it. Here's Lemons in a Nutshell. I do really like the hard work at the porta potties. I mean, it is a giant piece of shit. <laughs> Mental Ward. Who's a guy that can blow up a car in two different races? It's mental. Canadian Essex V6, no shit! <laughs> 